Welcome back everyone. My name is Sherry Rezwani and I'm a researcher at the Center for Community-Based Research. Welcome to webinar number four of Evaluating Refugee Programs, a workshop in evaluation capacity building. In webinar number one, we discussed what evaluation is the basics of community-based evaluation, and why community-based evaluation is important for refugee programs. Webinar number two was an introduction into phase one of conducting an evaluation, which is building the foundation. Webinar number three introduced us into phase two of conducting an evaluation, which is evaluation planning. In this webinar, we will look at phase three of conducting an evaluation, which is about information gathering and analysis. Again, we invite you to check out our project website, www.evalforefugee.ca, as there are a number of additional resources, such as primary videos, outcome inventory based on reports and literature in the refugee sector, additional evaluation resources and online sites, as well as PowerPoint slides from this workshop. This project is guided by a national advisory committee of practitioners, academics, networks, and people with lived refugee experience. In addition, we are in the process of developing a mentorship program, a list of people that are interested and willing to mentor, coach, and work alongside refugee programs in evaluation. We are also developing a Canada-wide community of practice, which is coming soon. Before we begin this section, let us quickly review what evaluation is. Evaluation is an organized approach to collecting information about activities, impacts, and effectiveness that helps to improve a program or organization and describe its accomplishments. To effectively evaluate refugee programs, we are proposing to apply the community-based evaluation model. Community-based evaluation is important and different from other forms of evaluation. It is stakeholder driven, participatory in nature, and action oriented. The aim of community based evaluation is involving all stakeholders in producing useful results for positive change. There are four phases of community based evaluation laying the foundation, evaluation planning, information gathering and analysis, and acting on findings. Webinar number one was an introduction in what evaluation is and why we do it. Webinar number two discussed laying the foundation in community-based evaluation. Webinar three discussed phase two, evaluation planning. In this webinar, we will discuss phase three, information gathering and analysis. An evaluation is only as good as the information you gather and how you use it. We need to think deeply at the outset about how we can use evaluation information for learning. In this phase three of community-based evaluation, we will, dis we will discuss how to gather information ethically and how to analyze and summarize information. Having a plan is integral to the data gathering phase. Once you create a data gathering plan, ensure that the data is being gathered according to that plan. An important component of this is ensuring people are trained adequately. Are the people trained to gather data in the way you are asking them to? This also applies if you are hiring a consultant. It's important to ensure they are trained to deal with this specific population. Another important aspect of the data gathering phase is having regular meetings with the steering committee. 
you want to have regular meetings so that the steering committee is not surprised by the outcomes. All members of the steering committee should be reflecting on the data gathering process, each person asking themselves, what did we learn this week? And what are we anticipating to learn next week? Steering committee meetings are also a time to bring up issues that may arise so they can be discussed and resolved. In the data gathering phase, it is also recommended that you run pilot tests in this phase. And finally, no matter what type of data gathering, always ensure ethics is considered and followed. This is integral to the entire process. Right now, please take a moment to pause the video and reflect on the following question. Within your context or sector, what are the considerations, issues, challenges that you have run into regarding ethics? Do you have your answer? Keep it in mind as we review ethics in evaluation. So what is ethics in evaluation? Firstly, the ethical principle underlying evaluation and the fundamental principle in bioethics is to do no harm, both on an individual and community level. All of your work should ensure that no harm is done to the participants. This is meant to remind the evaluator to take into consideration the harm that any intervention might do. This should be considered thoughtfully and seriously before conducting any evaluation. Secondly, ensure there is informed consent. Participants must understand what they're agreeing to and understand that they can walk away at any time without consequences. Throughout the entire evaluation process, ensure that the best interests of people are kept in mind and protect all the stakeholders involved. Be aware of who is using or will be using or accessing data. Ensure the data is shared with the people who disclose the information, who are the participants. Recognize power dynamics, problematic relationships, and ulterior motivations. Constantly reflect back on these dynamics as it can influence your results. In doing evaluations in the refugee sector, one must consider the ethics of doing evaluations with people who have been made vulnerable. There are various reasons why refugees are vulnerable. Reasons such as precarious legal status of refugees, unequal power relationships between participants and re researchers, literacy rates may be low, refugees may be unfamiliar with Western research and consent procedures, there might be emotional fatigue or re-traumatization in sharing personal stories. And lastly, there may be mistrust or conflict between researchers and refugee communities. In conducting ethical evaluations in the refugee sector, the evaluators must be trauma-informed and create a sense of safety. You may do this by building relationships of trust and mutual accountability. You can include and learn from experts in trauma-informed practice in evaluation. You can build researcher awareness and ability to recognize signs of trauma. Ensure you're appropriately responding through the integration of trauma knowledge, policies, practices, and procedures. Prioritize safety at all the steps of research and engagement with community partners. Now I invite you to take a moment to pause the video and reflect on the following question. How are you trauma-informed in your work? 
how can those strategies be applied to evaluation? In conducting evaluations, we want an evaluation that reinforces the self-rescue story. The refugee experience is unique to other migrants as they are being forced to migrate for fear of persecution or death. Resettlement marks a shift from feeling destruction to building life and a new home. There are two key elements of the self-rescue story. One, the eligibility to exist or identity. And two, the ability to act or agency. Please pause the video now to take a moment and reflect on the following question. How do you think you can evaluate in such a way that reinforces newcomers to be and act as persons of self-rescue? in pursuit of life beyond refuge. Here is the Working Together Project example. This slide outlines the three mechanisms for ethical practice they chose for this project. Please pause the video and take some time to review this slide. Community Research Ethics Office does ethical reviews for community-based research. You can access this to ensure that you are following ethical guidelines. Now let's talk about data analysis and summarizing information. Data analysis is a large and complex process. We will not discuss in details the different types of data analysis, but this slide is meant to be an overview of ways to analyze information and ways to summarize information. There is doing evaluation and there is using evaluation. To use evaluation, it needs to be summarized in usable ways. It might initially be in various Excel spreadsheets but it then needs to be transferred to formats that are more usable. This slide shows the general ways that quantitative and qualitative information can be analyzed and summarized. Examples would be performing a content analysis for qualitative data or a statistical analysis with quantitative data. To summarize data, you can summarize across methods or across stakeholders. Assess your data and keep in mind your evaluation questions that you want answered. Analyze the data in a way that will help you answer your evaluation questions. Moreover, summarize your information in a way that makes the most sense in the context of your questions. This process will be different for everyone and in every evaluation project. Finally, be open for the unexpected. Sometimes when conducting evaluations, we hit the unexpected and need to know how to adapt. There will be many times where data collection may not meet the needs of the steering committee and you will have to adjust. This point re-emphasizes the feedback loop between phases two and three, which are evaluation planning and data gathering analysis. Always be open to change your plan and adjusting it as necessary in order to conduct the most effective evaluation possible. We now come at the end of phase three of community-based evaluation process, which is about information gathering and analysis. This phase comprises two important steps. One, gathering information, and two, analyzing and summarizing information. We have also emphasized ethical principles that should guide evaluators throughout the community-based evaluation process. 
Next, we are going to discuss phase four of community-based evaluation, which is acting on findings in our last webinar, webinar number five.